Hello jambo habari yenu karibu sana to my channel if this is your first time <laughs> to love visitors and we love welcoming you so please feel comfortable take a seat and look for the most comfortable seat and make yourself comfortable you are welcome to this family if you are a returning subscriber karibu sana again i keep telling you you are the reason why i keep coming back to give you more and more content if you have been watching my videos and you have not subscribed please do not go beyond this step until you subscribe so i'm going to give you one minute if you have not subscribed you subscribe and then we are going to continue i have a very interesting topic today and if you want to listen to this topic don't go anywhere it's very very hot so as you subscribe i'm going to fan myself because it's extremely hot this is summer and i'm just going to be fanning myself as you subscribe i'll be back <laughs> Today's video is about budgeting. If you ever relocate to the UK, I'm going to tell you about the cost of living in the UK, how you need to budget, how you can comfortably survive in a, in a good budget if you ever relocate to the UK. You know, somebody asked me, I've been doing, if you've been following me, I've been doing a series of videos of um, if you want to relocate to the UK. Um, on a work visa or in whichever other ways you want to relocate to the UK, whether you need to convert the UK pounds into the currency of origin where you come from to have an understanding of what that means for you. Now I'm going to give you one tip, one tip, and you will remember me for the rest of your life if you follow this tip. If you ever move, whether it is the UK, USA, Dubai, wherever part of the world that you move to don't ever try to convert the money into that country why because you find I you may be deceived to think that you have a lot of money but in fact that money can only make you survive or can make you comfortably live in the country where you are in for example I've been saying that uh, if you and I'm just going to give you a job example because that is I think what I've spoken mostly about if you ever relocate to the UK the minimum threshold is 25,400 now if you want to convert that money into Kenya shillings I'm going to give an example using Kenyan currency at the moment the rate of exchange is one pound is equals to 135 obviously that changes every day let's let's say it is 135 to one pound if you try and convert that money you will see that you have a lot of money that is uh, annual income now what you don't know is that there are taxes that you will need to pay if you're working in and i'm going to talk about the uk because this is where i am if you're working there are taxes that get deducted from your salary so before you even get that twenty-five thousand, it has been deducted and most likely your take home will be likely twenty thousand, depending on what deductions that you're paying it may be twenty thousand to twenty two thousand per year that you will be taking home after the taxes have been deducted that is why I say don't try to convert that money because it has been worked in a way that you can comfortably live in the country where you are in. Now, 25,000 roughly is about, if I just work it out per hour, we're talking about a job where you will be earning 10 pounds per hour. Now, I think that's a comfortable budget. There are people who earn less. The, oh my God, look at me how I'm sweating. Please allow me to find myself as I continue in this video because it is just too hot and I really wanted to do this video. But uh, hey, hey. so I was saying that that uh, 10 pounds per hour is a comfortable budget. There are people who earn less than that. So if you're earning 10 pounds per hour, 
you are earning good money and that is money that you be able to live in a comfortable place you'll be able to own your car you'll be able to afford food if you have a family you'll be able to provide for your family with that 10 pounds if you earn more it is a budget and it is very possible to earn more than 10 pounds per hour it is very very possible what you need to consider is that there are taxes you will need to pay anyway moving on the other thing that you will need to consider is where or which city you would you would like to relocate to so depending on the city that you move to depending on the area that you live the cost of living is different for example the cost of living in london is very different from the cost of living in the northern sides of england manchester wales scotland those sides it can be cheaper compared to the cost of living in london so that's something else to bear in mind as you're looking for a job know where you want to live it's important that you know somebody in the area that you're living because you will need to be guided i don't think it is a good idea to move blindly when you haven't got any sub any support system from your friends or your family members it is important there are people who take that risk they move and they don't know anybody if you're that kind of person if you're a risk taker and you're comfortable why not go for it um the other thing when it comes to budgeting and um and and how to survive one of the things that people make a mistake is like for example when you go to the shop you try to convert i'm going to give basic example you go to the shop you find a bread in the uk a bread costs between 75 pounds to a pound and even maybe a pound 20 depending on which type of bread that you want if you try and convert that money into kenya shillings you will never buy anything here because everything is going to look like it is extremely expensive like i told you one pound is 135 kenya shillings if you're earning 25,800 or 25,600 pounds per year that can convert approximately into 3.3 million now you may think that is a lot of money i don't know at this point what is comfortable living expense in kenya but a budget of 25,000 in the uk is a comfortable budget 3.3 million i don't know if that is a good budget when you're in kenya you decide for yourself now um in terms of the shopping like i said it is important that you shop with the uk mind don't shop with a kenyan mind otherwise you're never going to to buy anything everything you will see as it is really really expensive that is one major mistake that people do and they find it very very difficult if you go on converting the money into the uk pounds from kenya shillings for example you're going to find things very very expensive and you may be discouraged that is a mistake never try to do that okay now let's talk about renting renting and uh, maybe even buying a house again it all depends with the area buying a house or even renting a house in london because maybe it is a capital city is more expensive than buying a house or renting a house in another area of the uk for example in the northern part of england it's going to be less costly it all depends on your circumstance you may find a job in london and that's also something else to think about that um, there is a pay difference very slight pay difference if you're living in london and you're living in the northern part of england or i don't know about the Mid midlands i live in the northern part of england so i can only talk about the northern part of england but you will find that there's usually a slight difference of pay depending on the area that you are living now that is not to say that you cannot live in the northern part and that is not to say that you cannot live in london in fact most people prefer to work in london because that's where there's a lot of jobs going on there's a lot of opportunities it being a capital city 
you can imagine there's going to be lots of opportunities there's also going to be issues about transport in london you can get uh, the underground trains where else if you move further out of london you don't get those underground trains the, the transport the transport system is not as good or the transport network is not as good outside london like it is in london so again it's a preference it's a personal preference depending on where you want to live you make that decision for yourself if you have children some people decide to move away from london the city and they prefer to live away from the city but still maybe go to london to work there if you want to work in london and you're living away from london most people prefer to live like in the midlands uh, so those are places like Coventry, uh, which are the Luton, those areas, Northampton, those are the places that people who would like to work in London but then m live away from the city to escape the commotion. It can be a bit congested, congested in London, so that is also something else to bear in mind. If you don't mind that, if you're coming as a single person and you don't mind the fast life, London may be the best place for you. Again, that's a personal preference. I cannot advise you on that. That is up to you to make that decision. However, it comes with a cost implication. So if you live in London, just know that life is going to be more costly than living outside of London. Now, the other things is about schools. So if you do relocate and you're eligible, you're, you'll be able to bring your family members if you have a family and you will need to consider schools and in the uk schools are usually allocated depending on the area where you live so like even in manchester alone it has different other towns and depending on the town that you live your children are going to go to the schools within the town where you live so some people do research and they look at the schools how they are performing to make a decision on where they need to stay because where you stay the schools around that area are the only schools that your children can attend and i know there are people who prefer to find good schools and move to those areas so that their children can attend good schools that are in that area again that is a personal preference you make that decision um Universities are open. You can live, you can go to university anywhere. You can be living in Manchester and go to university in London. You can be living in London and decide to go to university in Wales or Scotland, those areas. That has no um, implication at all. You don't have to be living in that area to attend a university in that area. You can literally attend university anywhere. Again, speaking about university, there is a budget to consider if you want to send your children to university and they are living away from where you live you may want to consider hostel accommodation for students or even finding them a suitable accommodation that they can share as students that is going to be near the university that is always recommended because it does not make sense for you to send your child to a university in wales or scotland and you live in london and you expect them to be commuting every day it's just not realistic so if you're coming just whilst i'm on that point if you're coming purely for university again it is important to consider the accommodation around the area where you live there are hostels that the university provides but also you can get rental accommodation privately for from people that rent houses that live not too far from the university quite local to the university and it may be cheaper so what i normally recommend people who are re who are relocating to come to the uk to study initially maybe you may take the hostel accommodation from the university so you can get to know your area well since you're still very new once you're here and um, just take a, a small contract or a minimal contract once you're here then you can make the decision to move away into a private accommodation that's going to be cheaper but it's still accessible to the university you know you become clever and you get to know more as you live in the uk you, you get to find out more information when you're here 
I cannot be able to give you all that information as much as I would like to help you because there's still so much that you need to know and you may be able to do your own research when you're here to make those decisions for yourself. My preference may not be your preference and therefore it is important that you make an informed decision before you make any commitment or before you even um, make a move. It is possible to find rented accommodation if you relocate to the UK and you're coming to work. It is possible to find a private accommodation in the UK but initially you will need to maybe settle with somebody because in order to be able to rent a house unless you have enough money and you want to come and buy a house which you maybe will be buying cash money because i would not imagine that you're going to be able to get credit immediately you come for a mortgage the option here if you're new to the uk would be renting an accommodation now to rent an accommodation you will need proof of address so you need to show that you've lived in that particular address for three months and you need bank statement to support your income you will need um, evidence of your work so you you're going to be required to, prov to provide pay slips to your housing provider you you're also going to need somebody that can sign you as a guarantor just in case you decide to disappear with the landlord's money you need a guarantor and that is why i think it is important that you know somebody before you come somebody that is going to be willing to stand and be your guarantor if you're going to move into your own accommodation after three months you should be able if you if you're working you've got all the evidence to provide you should be able to move into your own private accommodation and start living you know as a, as a family if you come as a family or as a single person depending on your own circumstances so again that is something to consider in terms of the budget the things that you will need to bring with you there is before i forget there is a fee that you need to pay to the home office if you're primarily relocating to work there is a fee that you need to pay to the home office if you have read the guidelines that i have put in in the description link you probably would have seen but there is a fee that you need to pay when you're making an application to relocate one of it is the nhs um, surcharge and that is a mandatory charge that you need to pay i think if you're working in a shortage occupation you get a, a waiver for that if i am not wrong but if it is other occupations you still have to pay that fee so look for that information on the website that i left it has all the information that you require whether you need to pay the fee how much fee you need to pay all that information is going to be on there so i think that is it for this video again keep asking the questions that you want to be answered i'm here at your service to help you to find your way to come to the uk in a legal way i am not shying off from helping you and answering any questions that you may have until the next video guys i'm going to wrap it here and i say baraka yeah.